Well, we're here today with Olivier Melnick of Chosen People Ministries at the pre-trib conference, uh, right. Olivier, and we're glad that you could sit down with us for a few moments. And well, so we want to know more about Chosen People Ministries, but we want to get right to the punch. What do you see as the clearest sign that Jesus is coming soon? Uh, well, you know, I there's several things that I see is coming back soon, but the, 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 the way that the events uh, of the world today are like uh, speeding up exponentially, I've been threatening to uh, design a t-shirt that says, normal is not coming back, but Jesus is. <laughs> That's, That's a good, and, yeah. <laughs> because a good there's so much happening. Uh, and uh, from, from the perspective of, of, of Jewish ministry and Jewish people in Israel, we've seen a lot of Jewish people going back to the land in unbelief, which is, I think, the one prophecy that you can say is happening in our day, in, in front of our eyes right now. That's a super sign, right? That the Bible gives when Israel is back in the land, right. you know these things are coming to right. Jesus said that. Exactly, okay. so, so the, Jew, the Jews going back to, to the land in unbelief, and also parallel to that, the increase in anti-Semitism, mm -hmm. see how Satan is, Satan knows who's the, he's the creator of anti-Semitism, he knows that his days are counted. So he's gonna do everything he can to, to, to go after the Jews because he also knows that if you go after the Jews, Jews, you can destroy the Jews, and if you destroy the Jews, they will not call upon the one who they have pierced and say, Baruch Abba Bashem Adonai, which is what brings back Yeshua, Jesus, at the second coming. But first, the rapture has to take place. Okay, so the rapture is the next prophetic event. Obviously, well, Satan's going after less, the though, Jews, yeah. Yeah. but you are also going after the Jews as a in Jew. In a good way. In a good way. In a yes. good way. So I hear you teach anti-Semitism. No, yeah. so I teach about anti-Semitism. <laughs> <laughs> I've been told that. So, so what does Chosen People Ministries really do? What is the, the focus other than reaching out to Jewish people? Well, Chosen People Ministries, uh, we, we got started in 1894, and I am not the founder. Okay. Uh, 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 we wondered about that, didn't yes. we? Yes. Yes. And uh, our mission statement is uh, we, we exist to uh, pray for, evangelize, disciple, and, uh, uh, and serve the Jewish community and help others do the same. Okay. So uh, that's, that, that's basically what we've been doing for uh, over 127 years. 127, so when was it founded? 1894. I hear there's a really interesting story it behind certainly is. that. Tell us a little bit about the founder, Leopold Kohn, who came. Leopold Kohn, uh, Hungarian rabbi, was looking in the scriptures and he started, you know, stumbled upon some messianic prophecies like Isaiah 53 or Isaiah 9, 6 and 7, Isaiah 7, 14, all those prophecies. And so he went to his chief rabbi and he said, you know, I'm reading those scriptures in our Bible, the Jewish Bible, the Old Testament. And uh, it seems to be leading to, towards a person, a redeemer, like the Messiah. I wonder if you can help me with that. And his rabbi got a little upset that he was looking at scriptures that were controversial for the Jewish people. So he went, you know what? You're looking for the Messiah? Why don't you go to America? They have everything over there. He took it at face value. He got on a ship. And a couple of weeks later, he landed in Brooklyn. Okay. The, the Holy Land. And, um, <laughs> For Jews. So, yeah. Yeah. Holy and Land West. Yeah. So he's like walking the streets of Brooklyn and he hears w talking, like, like there was a building with an open door. He did not know it was a church. And he hears uh, he, a language he understands, not Hungarian, but Yiddish, which is a Jewish dialect mix of uh, Hebrew and, uh, German. and, and German. German. So uh, he goes out, oh, that's interesting, I, I, I know this language, so he's, he picks his curiosity, he walks in, he sits in the back of the, of the church, and he's listening to this guy doing a Bible study and talking about Jesus. And very curious, he goes, oh, this is interesting, so he keeps coming back quietly a few, a few times uh, over a, a short period of time and listening in the back, and eventually, to make a long story short, he found his Messiah. So his rabbi was right. He came to America and he found his Messiah. <laughs> and then in 1894, he founded the uh, uh, Brownsville, which is an area of, uh, of Brooklyn, the Brownsville, the Brownsville Mission, which eventually became the American Board of Missions to the Jews, the ABMJ, for many years. And then uh, a few decades ago, was renamed Chosen People Ministries. Wow. So you really do have a long heritage, yeah. not only in ministry, but as a Jew. What would you recommend to someone like Nathan and myself who want to be a blessing to the Jews, a conduit, a blessing. How do we reach out and share the Jewish Messiah with people who are Jewish, who sometimes are resistant from hearing uh, yeah. of hearing from a Gentile believer? Right. Never read Isaiah fifty-three. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Well, if you read well, if you read Isaiah fifty-three to a Jewish person without telling them where it's from, 
I've done this many times. I'd say, you know, I want to read something to you and I want you to listen to the words and tell me if it paints a picture of anything. So I read the passage, which is the, the exact passage is Isaiah 52, 13 through 53, 12. We call it Isaiah 53, but that's, that's the that passage. And I've read it to Jewish people and they go, I don't believe in the New Testament and, and the story of Jesus. This is not for us. I said, what are you talking about? Well, you're talking to me about, you know, the Jesus dying, being crucified. And it's, it's, it's obviously that you're talking about Jesus here. Said, are you sure? Well, yeah. And then I tell him, I said, well, it's actually in, in your Bible, in Isaiah. And sometimes they get upset, but they cannot, it, the, the fact is there. It's, it's in a Jewish Bible. It was prophesied 700 years before crucifixion even existed. And, um, and so it's, it's a very powerful passage. I have had that experience uh, riding on an airplane back and forth to Israel. Oftentimes I will be seated near Jewish people. And one time there was an Orthodox man. He was from Brooklyn who was studying some of his commentaries. That's what they tend to study. Right. And I said, what are you studying? We got in a conversation and he was eager to, uh, to converse. It was a long flight. And I finally asked him, have you ever read in the book of Isaiah? And he said, no, not really. And he, this is a man who read constantly. He told me he was studying always, but only the, the writings of the rabbis. I said, well, if I may, can I show you just a passage in Isaiah? He'd never read it. His own, you know, Bible per se that he recognized, but he had never read those words. He'd only read commentaries and I, was, it was very obvious that they had never commented on Isaiah 53. Well, that's not uncommon. And another thing, if you go to most synagogues, uh, they, you know, like you can go to, to, to a church or a Catholic church, you have a prayer book or, or you know, or a hymnal in a, you know, you know, in a, you know, evangelical church. Well, if you go to a synagogue, there's going to be a prayer book with prayers for different holidays, different services. And the, we divide the, 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 uh, the Torah into 54 because there's 52 weeks plus two extras, uh, 52, uh, 54 portions, and we read them on Shabbat on uh, every, every weekend. And when you get to Isaiah 52, 12, the next passage is Isaiah 54, 1. Oh, wow. Mm. They do not include that passage as if it does not exist. So the common Jewish person reading the, the passage for the week will not even know that Isaiah 52, 13 through 53, uh, 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 12 exist. It's not there. And they don't even know it. Now, a good thing that I would recommend uh, Gentiles to do with their Jewish friends is, um, uh, so like you just said, uh, Jewish people really, sp th those who are religious and who, who, who read uh, a lot, like the, 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 the Jewish men you met on the plane, this is probably maybe 15% of the Jewish people of the world, they're going to be focusing on the Talmud, the commentaries on the Bible and, uh, and a lot of the commentaries by rabbi like Rashi or Rambam and, and they don't read the word. They read what, it's like you and I reading a Ryrie Bible but we only read under the line. Yes. Whatever Ryrie said is, is, is good for me. Uh. The, the top, the word of God is not that important because Ryrie knows better. I had a friend of mine back in the, when I lived in Philadelphia, a very large Jewish population in Philadelphia young woman and uh, a Messianic Jewish ministry, a lot of them up there, gave me some materials in Russian because her family had emigrated from Russia and I gave them to her to read. She said, oh, you'll like this because it's in Russian. You, you might find that interesting. Next day she comes back, she throws at my face. Says, my parents said, don't even read that. That's taboo. We will never read this stuff. I don't know what's on it. My, she, they wouldn't let me read it, but we can't read it. And it's so sad that, that the fulfillment of the Messiah they've been looking for in Isaiah 53 is right there, but they won't even read the material about it. So, so, so let me, I want to finish my, uh, this. So what I do is I look at three, three different elements. I tell my Jewish friend, uh, and anybody can do it. You say, listen, uh, you don't believe in the New Testament. You don't believe it's, it's inspired. And you, we all do, but you tell a Jewish friend, you don't believe in the New Testament. So let's put it aside. Let's not even refer to it. Let's not look at anything in the New Testament. But I also, and you start with that, you, you volunteer to, to do something first. And you say, but, but I don't see the Talmud as being inspired. And it, historically, it's very valuable, but, but I don't see it as being the Word of God. So could we put also put that aside for the, the, the sake of the conversation? Then you and I are left with only one thing that we have in common, the Jewish Bible. Now you start with Genesis and you go through all the Messianic prophecies. Oh, no wow. Talmud, no New Testament. And it's prophecy you use. It's prophecy. That's, That's what it. led me to Jesus okay. 38 years ago. What's important, you have to understand the history of the Jewish people. Uh, like you said, the, 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 the Christian, uh, I, I tell Christians that when you go into a, uh, 
uh, conversation with a Jewish person, you bring baggage. Mm. And when I, when, I, when I teach on this, I have a, a PowerPoint, I have a picture of a suitcase, and I put that on the screen, it's a big suitcase, and on it, I put those stickers of you know, the different countries, and I put Crusades, Inquisition, Martin Luther, the Black Plagues, uh, the Holocaust, and I go, as a Christian Gentile, you bring that suitcase into the conversation. You have that baggage. It, it exists. You cannot dismiss it. You cannot uh, uh, d diminish the whole thing. Well, the only thing you can do is open it beforehand and learn about what's inside the suitcase because your Jewish friend knows about it. Yeah. You cannot ignore it. And every Christian, not anti-Semitic, but every Christian, because of the reputation that the church and, the, and Christianity has for 2,000 years, you bring that baggage in any conversation with a Jewish person. So be aware of it. Certainly. Well, Olivier, we, uh, we look forward to the day when not just Nathan and I, but eight more Gentiles will grab a hold of guys like you and say, take us with you because we know that you are blessed and so today, we're glad that you came. You have been a blessing to us and uh, will continue to be as we work alongside one another as co-laborers in our Jewish Messiah.